Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Samer, and this is Seopolis. And today, we made all these. Ta -da. I know it doesn't look like a lot, but it is quite a lot. It's auto processing. And the best thing about this is it's totally free. Minus 15 CPEX for each one of these wind turbines. But without any further delay, sit back, relax, and enjoy. I'll see you in a second. Oh, and check out my Discord, it's down there in the description. Can't miss it. So, here we are. Let me go through what my plans are for today's episode. Now, I initially wanted to fully automate this military, but for that, we're going to need a sear duct. And a sear duct comes with cobalt. And cobalt, wait for it, comes from seething netherrack with a diamond mesh. Okay, a few things here. We have no netherrack nor diamonds. So how are we gonna get these? Well, netherrack, same as a lot of different other materials, it's going to come from an igneous extruder. Which means uh, these all structures that we made right here, they're gonna go. Yep, they have become irrelevant already. The reason being, this igneous extruder will do exactly the same, but it can be more specific. Say for example, you put gravel underneath, you will only get gravel. You put marble, marble. Smooth stone, smooth stone, etc, etc. Now the recipe we're most interested about is this one over here. Lava and blue ice, which by the way, they don't get consumed, same as these setups over here. Will give us netherrack continuously, from a single block. Now there's a catch. So far we don't have access to any of these. Uh, the blue eyes needs a chiller, a blast chiller, which is uh, right here. And this requires a machine frame, which we can totally make. And a redstone flux coil, which, yeah, we can't. Now to get our igneous extruder, we're gonna need a redstone servo. And a servo requires four diamonds. Ugh. So, okay, let's focus on these first. How are we gonna get diamonds? Diamonds come from seething overall matter in a diamond mesh, which requires a servo, which requires the diamonds. Wait a minute! Diamonds come from seething in a diamond mesh, which requires a servo, which requires the diamonds. Okay, let's start with the induction smelter. This is something we can do. All right, seems like we're gonna use these quite a lot. So why don't we make a few casts, gold casts, that is. We're gonna need one for gears, one for ingots, and a plate. How do we make a plate? This should be a good plate. Yep. So if I do something like this, all right, that's a small play gold cast. So let's do the same with the ingot and the gear. Now we're gonna need to make a lot of electrum and iron plates. And electrum is gold and silver. Yep, okay. So electrum uh, over there. And then I want the iron. Oh, and look at that, that was the quest. I can see why. Now, since the quest wants me to have an electrum ingot, there you go, that's an electrum ingot, back inside. So I guess this is what we should follow, machine frame induction smelter, yeah, we're going well. And then from there, all the other machines. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Oh, and apparently we need also a little bit of inbar, so two blocks of iron, a block of nickel, yeah, I should do it. Those are three machine frames. And now with these, can we make these already? Oh, of course. I'm going to need a block of redstone and two pieces of sand. Now I should be able to craft these. Ta-da! Nice. And you know what? I just thought of something. 
We have no power nor access to it. Nah, I'm just kidding. We do have access to it. The thing is, in order to get power, which is going to come in shape of a wind turbine from Mechanism, we need to unlock a few quests first, and that is the Auto Sieve, which we might as well go ahead and set up. So basically, I just need to complete this chapter. Interesting. Oh! <laughs> okay! Can totally do. So let's start with the configurator. Then we're gonna need to make some basic mechanical pipes and some basic logistical transporters. By the way, basic mechanical pipes transfer fluids and then the basic logistical transporters transfer items. Oh, so this is how the pack intended us to start working towards power. I see. Okay, we, we, we need to get it anyways to get the quest started. So yeah, let's do that. Let's put this over here. And if memory serves me right, if we put a little bit of coal in there, it will give us some energy. Which is okay, I guess. Okay, then we need to make some universal cable. This is the one that we're going to use to transfer RF. And there we go. An auto save. Oh, I need to make one of these again. And for that we need any kind of glass. And a sieve. Okay. And... Ta -da! That's our auto sieve. And for the time being, I'm just going to place it in here. Just because. I wonder, do you transfer energy by yourself or do you need some kind of cable? Build input. Nah, don't. Oh, yeah. You do you, you really auto output. Okay. Okay. I like that. And let's see. Can we now get... Yay. We have access to the wind turbines. Awesome. Each one of them costs 15. Okay, how do you claim something from the shop? Like that? Ooh, okay, we got one. Let's take another one, just in case. Can I? Don't you tell me you can only buy these ones. Really? Is there any kind of timer or anything like that? That changes a lot. Really? Let's sleep. Now the thing with wind generators is the higher they are, the more efficient they are, or the more power they generate. Right now it's generating 113 RF per tick. That's this number in the middle, right here. Nah, still better than nothing. Oh, wait a second. Reset the shop. Let's try this. Progress has I like been this. changed. This what about cute. my quests? We're doing good. Nothing has changed from there. Does that mean... Ho 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 ho. Can I get uh, another one of these wind turbines? Oh, I can. <laughs> nice. I didn't know that was a thing. It got me really scared for a second. The most efficient way to place these, by the way. Opposite to each other. Yeah, they should not lose any efficiency. Look at that. I know it's not very good looking. But trust me, it is really nice. <laughs> so we do have our induction smelter. Let's give it some use. Okay, so red alloy it's iron, redstone and copper, copper. Next, we're going to work towards these multi-servo press. Which should give us a few diamonds. Yeah, definitely. Now for each redstone fluix coil, we're gonna need two gold ingots, which is okay. This is a weird mechanic, but uh, it is what it is. So it should be something like this. Yeah, okay. I was worried for a second. I thought it would turn into an ingot cast. But nah, it works perfectly fine. And I should probably check the quests because, you know, since we're following them, nah, it seems like we're okay. Now that's our multi servo press. Noise. Let's get our coal, our 300 pieces. Let's hook this up over here. And let's give it some coal. I mean, I'm gonna say you're going to auto input from the left. 
Ooh, shiny. Nice. That's our first diamond. Now we're going to need at least four in order to get our redstone servo going. Plus another four for each one of these igneous extruders that we're going to make. And uh, trust me, we're probably going to make a lot. If and when you run out of that, you can also put your tiny coal in there and it will turn into regular coal. Which then, of course, you can turn into diamonds again. A few inches later. Alright, so far we've got 10 diamonds plus, you know, all the diamonds that we may get from here. Ooh, but that's gonna take a long time. That's alright, let's find something else to do. For example, the blast chiller. Yep, can totally do this. I can actually do this right now. Oh, I'm missing a piece of glass and to compress over wall matter. Blast chiller, where are you? Nice! And if you check the quests, you'll see that uh, Blast Chiller is used for a few things. One of them being ice, another one being obsidian. And we want both. Starting with ice. Hmm. For the time being, I'm just gonna put this one here and just bucket the water in, like so. And as you can see over time, that's giving us ice. We can take this ice and we can turn it into packed ice. <laughs> now, uh, we need a lot of... Now we need a lot of packed ice in order to get blue ice. And remember, we want the blue ice in order to get netherrack. With one of these Ignis extruders. Ugh, I already finished my packed ice. Oh, which means... Boop, I can make blue ice. Perfect. But this machine is very, very slow. I wonder how expensive are these things? Uh, not expensive at all. What about the next one? Ah, uh, okay, the recipe is changed. Signalium and nether. Okay, well, well, at least we can make this one. And in this version of Minecraft, you just put it in the augmentation tab. Which makes it so its scale factor is now two times. Which means it can take more power and it will work a bit faster. And since you're not spending a lot of time watching at these, I know you can't tell there's a huge difference, but trust me, there is. Now to make this diamond gear, we need a gear working die. Oh, an electrum gear. Mm, okay. Something like this. So let's change these for a second. Let's give you that. And if I were to put a the view. That turns into these. And wait a second. Does that mean... Oh, I think it does. We can totally make a few servers. Just like that. Awesome. Oh, and since I'm up here, I'm going to claim all these. And... Bloop. Let's have a look at the diamond mess once again. We're going to need 16. Okay. <laughs> 16 reds and flux coils. An iron mesh, not too bad, and a redstone servo. Okay, now correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I can do something like this. If I put a hopper there and put these, yeah, that works. Okay, am I gonna get blank cast? We'll see. It's like a flush. Nice, it works. Awesome. So I guess we can automate that in that way. Nice. I think I made just enough for two of our diamond meshes. And I know I should probably get... No, do you know what? I'm going to make just one. Yeah, just the one. Because I want to use one of these servers in order to make an igneous extruder. Yeah, okay, so let's make just the one. One, one, and 16. And oh boy, oh boy, that's gonna take a long time. Never mind that, let's get our igneous extruder, which should be... Oh, we need another piece of cobblestone. So let's get that piston going and... Our igneous extruder. Awesome! Okay, now with this igneous extruder we can make a lot of things. But since we want to get the netherrack going... Let's see, how about getting soul soil? Alright, soul soil is made in a barrel with which water and soul sand. Which water is made how? 
lava, a piece of obsidian, and witch water. Oh, okay, so we're gonna need to place a piece, uh, piece of obsidian somewhere. That's nice. What? Oh, and just so you know it, the obsidian is going to be made in a blast chiller. It takes a bucket, and it gives you a piece of obsidian. Which is not too bad. And I can finally get rid of this lava over here. Uh, do you have anything inside? No. Okay, and apparently that was another quest. Which is alright. Now, where do I want to put this obsidian? And uh, soon enough we'll be able to break it, so let's do that over here. Let's put a stone barrel on top, and let's get yet another bucket of lava. And in theory... Yep, that's turning. Is that going to be a quest somewhere here? Neither you mine. Yes. Okay. Let's get that. <laughs> and it seems like everything I planned was already a quest. So, note to myself. Check the quests. See what's up. <laughs> There's probably something interesting. Like these green slime blocks. I want them. I need them. And the quests are probably going to tell me how to get them in an easier way. Which is nice. This is a great example. Reading the quest, I can tell you now that if I use compressed blocks instead of uh, regular sand, I'm gonna get a lot more soul sand. So let's put that back in there. Let's put our compressed sand and... Uh. Okay, the texture is broken, but we got compressed soul sand. Which means nine pieces of soul sand. And once again, what do we need to make to make... What, what do we need? Ah, we need to make yet another bucket of those. So, lava in a barrel with obsidian and the need. We put our compressed soul sand... Nope. Okay, it doesn't work with compressed soul sand, but it's okay. We put a piece of soul sand and that's soul soil. I don't wait quite. Sometimes the block gets in there, sometimes the block just jumps off. It's weird. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have our setup. Oh, I'm missing a little bit of lava. But let's go down there and let me show you how that's going to work. Oh, and by the way, this is our diamond mesh. Done. So if you have a look at this setup over here, we have our lava, our water, and a block of preference underneath. This ignite extruder is going to work uh, exactly the same way. Well, more or less the same way. We put our ignis through there, we put our soil soil underneath, and yes, you need to actually put the block underneath. We're going to put a bucket of lava over here, our blue eyes over there, and these automatically starts working and it's giving us the nether rack. Nice! Okay, so uh, let's do this. I'm going to cut here, I'm going to get a few more of these ignis extruders. And then I'll be right back. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. Oh, and by the way, in just a matter of seconds, this is already full. This is a really powerful machine. You did your thing, but... Oh. Three hours later. Now, I made five auto sieves and three ignis extruders. With that will be four, and I ran out of coal. So that means no more diamonds. And yes, I could see some overworld matter, and uh, that'd be a thing, but uh, no. I think I'm gonna set up our auto sieves and uh, let them do the work for us. Everything I'm going to put down right now, I'll explain what I do and why I'm doing that. But keep in mind that uh, this whole thing, it's uh, going to change a lot. I made my mind on what the build is going to look like, and yep, this is gonna go. So, yeah, well, the principles are going to be the same, so there's that. Now, before I do anything else, I should probably... Yeah, you know what I'm going to do? I made these compacting drawers, and I'm going to change the collection of sand, red sand, uh, gravel, and so on and so forth, for these compacting drawers. Now, I'm using these compacting drawers, or I'm choosing to use these compacting drawers, for two reasons. First, they store a lot more... Oh, no, 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 that's, that's not what I want. I want you to make compress. Can I do that manually? And will you detect it? Compress sand. Can I put you in here? I can! Nice! 
All right, so not only can it auto craft these and the system will detect both, but also it holds a lot more than just these. I think drawers, yeah, drawers held 32 stacks while compacting drawers held 128. So yeah, that's a thing. Now that I'm thinking about it, the only way to get Underside Diorite, Soulstone, and, well, all these, is going to be through one of these old generators. So I guess one of them will stay. Eh, that's okay. Okay, let's start with Gravel, just as an example. I'm gonna play my Ignis Truth over there, my Lava over here. And then I want a little bit of uh, water over here. And look at that. That's already generating gravel. Awesome. Let's use some of these basic logistical transporters. Yeah, you don't have any output capability, do you? No. Okay. And then, uh, again, for right now, this is going to be like this. But uh, it doesn't have to be like this. Ow, ow. There you go. That should be extracting that over there. Excellent. And then we're going to transfer that over there. Okay. Oh, and of course, I'm missing something very important. For the gravel, we're probably just going to use an iron mesh. And that should be alright. Now for the red sand, we're going to need... Red sandstone. Our ignix extruder. Bucket of lava. And back in of water. And this now should be generating red sand. It is. Awesome. And you'll probably see where I'm going with this. Oh, by the way, I'm using iron meshes not only for gravel, but also for red sand and uh, regular sand. Oh, and by the way, uh, for the last two, I'll be using a diamond mesh. One of them will be for netherrack. So I'll move this one from here. But with a netherrack, there is a catch. And I'll... Okay, I'll show you what I mean by these. I made an auto hammer. Now I'm going to extend this power line over here. Yep, yeah, that's about right, I think. Then I'm going to put it over here. That's going to get some power. That's okay. And then, and here's a trick. I could use a logistical sorter. And I will definitely use this, probably for the next episode. But for now, these will do it. Uh, and what is it that I mean by for now? Okay, I'm gonna take a few pieces of you, compress another rack, which also was a quest. I'm gonna take a stack of nether rack. I'm gonna put it over here. That's gonna start crashing it. And uh, that's kind of a filter. Because uh, if I now do something like these, it will try to always extract what's already inside, in this case the netherrack, and uh, that way I don't need any filters. Any real filters, that is. Then I'm gonna get some of these crushed netherrack. Let me check the quests. Uh, no, yep, it seems like we're doing good. Oh, compressed crushed netherrack. Okay, let's take a few more pieces then. Now, I'm going to consider the compacting drawer as my buffer and I'm not going to put a buffer between these and the sieve because I think they operate more or less at the same speed. Compress cross wherever, go back to your normal shape. Let's put you over here and very very quickly let's... can I disconnect these? I can. I don't really need to but you know. In fact I'm going to disable all of them, just for the looks and efficiency, I guess. Although I don't really think these are ever going to run out of, you know, their inventory. These things are very, very fast. Now for the last one, I am going to use a logistical sorter. I'm going to take a piece of Oberwoldian matter and I'm going to add a new filter. Item stack, I want you save and uh, in here I'm gonna select let's say green now if I connect these basic logical logistical transporters no 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 I don't want you to connect there 
let's connect these from here, I guess. Now, the way the logistical sorter works, it's already filtered. I already said you can only extract these items and insert them into green. Now, the thing is, since this is a single pipe and it has just one output, I don't really need the filters. But uh, scroll, through, scroll through your uh, range or your configurator and you'll find configurate items. Right click on the pipe, I will say current color, cyan. Save right click and it will change the color. Oh, and that's because I changed these to different colors. So say I want these to non, non connects to all of them and specific colors will only connect to those colors. So if I change these back to normal, okay, now I can go through and yeah, that's already working. And the system should handle bouncing very well, as you'll see. It shouldn't happen very often, but uh, it might, whenever you do something or you put something manually. Now, what are the advantages of the diamond mesh? Because I know we haven't said anything about that. Well, basically, now we have access to nether quartz, a more reliable source of gold, which is okay. Solium, glowstone, blaze, and cobalt. Cobalt is the one that I'm after, really. But uh, just for the sake of quest completion, yeah, I'm going to take all of them. And I can even craft these into a cobalt piece. Nice. Can I double you here? Yeah, I can. But uh, I won't. Not at the moment. Well, actually... Yeah, let's do that. So that means... I can get my hands on my first two pieces of cobalt. Nice. And wait up, because that's not everything. We have enough for a Seer Dact. And trust me, this is really good. The whole point you know, of progressing all this match was just to get these. Let's change our setup just a little bit. Just a little bit. Up here, I want to replace you with you. And this has an interface. And if you have the interface, you can put a bucket with any kind of liquid inside. All right, nice. Uh, so we have 20 buckets of overworld matter. Let's change these for a bucket. And in that way, when we pour our liquid inside, we're going to get a bucket of wherever the liquid is. Well, in this case, that's going to be molten overworld matter. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to select you as a filter. Oh, really? What? I can't? Well, that's lame. Okay, I guess it doesn't work with overall matter. But it's alright. We can still use that for all the different automations. Anyhow, ooh, we got another diamond. Uh, is there anything new? Oh, yeah, we're also getting osmium or uranium. Oh, that's good. Sink. Oh, well, actually, let's, let's just get that. Okay, I like it. I like it a lot. Are we going to get anything new from here? No, we already got everything from it. So that's good. I know it looks like a mess, but th this works. And uh, that will do it for now. So, yeah. Well, actually, I don't know how long this is going to be working, but at least you know how this is done. Now, of course, I'm missing an output from here, but that will be from the bottom. And that shouldn't be too difficult. Let's just extract these into different drawers or a chest. And I'll use a chest just for now. I think. Yeah. But anyways, we move from something like these <laughs> to these. And that's a lot of progress. At least in my opinion. My humble, humble opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyways, same as always. Thank you very much for watching. Hit a like if you like the video. Subscribe if you learn something new. And I don't know, I guess I'll see you next time. Bye bye!